Member, it is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for York Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with pleasure I rise today on behalf of the decent and hardworking community of York Southwestern. Our community has been having to deal for far too long with a series of unresolved environmental incidents. I have written letters to the Environment Ministry and residents frequently are unsuccessful in getting the Ministry of the Environment hotline to respond and to investigate thoroughly the sites of the complaints. Despite these attempts to get the attention deserved, our community continues to suffer with an asphalt plant that has reports of bad odors through emissions along with dust complaints. We have a meat processing plant in the Stockyard neighborhood that has complaints of odor spills and heavy truck traffic. I have no issue with businesses operating in our community, but there is a clear on honors on them that they are responsible, good neighbors. The folks are here from express great frustration with what they see as a government ministry unresponsive to their concerns. The Ministry of the Environment needs to be responsive to, to, responsive to complaints of citizens and do their part to ensure these businesses operate like good neighbours. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now recognize the member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. On September 28, I joined the Honorable Parm Gill, Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism, Minister Raymond Cho, Minister of Seniors and Accessibility, PA Billy Pang, and PA Vijay Tanagasalam at the Chinese Cultural Center of Greater Toronto in Scarborough to launch an investment of $1.6 million to protect communities against racism and hate. Eligible organizations including community-based not-for-profit organizations can apply for grants of up to $40,000 over two years for independent projects, or $100,000 over two years for partnership between two or more organizations. This new grant will help facilitate positive change in our society. This grant also aligns with the CCCGT's two-year program Stronger Together, Herbie, they work in collaboration with 15 community organizations to tackle anti-racism, sorry, anti-Asian hate crimes through education and awareness. As a longtime associate of the Canadian Ethnocultural Council and secretary of the organization, for years I have advocated against racism and hate. Furthermore, I lecture on the devastating effect of racism and hate on our communities and residents. Therefore, I would like you to participate in this Thank you. Thank you. I recognize a member from Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, Sudbury has some of the best mine rescue workers in the world, and this September they proved it again. On September 29th, the scoop bucket was being transported underground in Valley's Totten Mine. During transport, it detached from the cage, it blocked the mine shaft. In layman's terms, the elevator to get underground was damaged, and there were 39 workers that were trapped at least 1,800 feet underground. 1,800 feet speaker is the height of the CN Tower. Some workers are more than double that distance, and today I want to bring recognition to the heroic work done by mine rescue teams at Totten Mine. Ontario Mine Rescue was founded in 1929. They've spent countless hours preparing mine rescue volunteers for any situation that may arise, and prepared they were for the blockage of Totten Mine. Over 72 intense hours, rescue teams helped the miners climb the long secondary egress ladder system. And while some miners were able to climb the ladders, workers who were older or those who were exhausted from the ordeal were pulled up using ropes. Mine rescue volunteers spent between, between 12 and 15 hours underground some rescue officers upwards of 48 hours in the mine. After three days of concentrated efforts, all 39 miners were safely brought to the surface. Speaker, Siberians always come together to help those facing danger, and this was no different. And on behalf of the Legislative Assembly, I want to thank Ontario Mine Rescue and their volunteers at Todd Mine. The families and loved ones of the 39 miners owe a great deal to their courage. Thank you, Speaker. I recognize a member from Sarnia Lampton. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I'm pleased to rise today to announce another critical investment in Sarnia Lampton by the Government of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to supporting hospitals so that they can provide 
the care that Ontarians need close to home. As part of that commitment, I'm pleased to announce an increase in funding to Sarnia Lambton's Blue Water Health of over $4 million in the 2021-2022 budget year. This new investment includes a 2.7% increase to annualized funding and one-time funding of nearly $150,000. This is a very important investment in Sarnia Lambton, Mr. Speaker. Every day, the team at Blue Water Health goes above and beyond to provide exceptional care to the people of Sarnia Lambton. While this has been especially true during the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that their compassion and commitment to care in our region will continue once the pandemic ends. As part of the 2021 budget, our government announced a total of $1.8 billion in additional investments for hospitals to ensure patients can access high-quality care across the province when they need it. Mr. Speaker, investing in Ontario's hospitals like Blue Water Health is part of our plan to end hallway health care and ensure that Ontarians receive exceptional care when they need it close to home. Thank you, Speaker. I recognize the member from Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to recognize the incredible work done by the Heart Lake Baptist Church in my community of Brampton North. Heart Lake Baptist Church was formed in 1977 and has been a great service to the community since. They have some important initiatives like their food pantry and heartbeat, heartbeat bikes. In response to the increased needs of our community as a result of COVID-19, Heart Lake Baptist Church started a food pantry on April 30, 2020. The first night they served four families and have steadily grown since. Now on average, they serve between 26 and 39 families per week. Each week they provide milk, eggs, butter, cheese, fresh fruits, vegetables, a variety of pantry items, and toilet paper. They also provide diapers, wipes, and baby food to our families with babies and feminine hygiene products as well. The church also provides toiletries and clean laundry supplies monthly as needed. Heart Lake Baptist Church also partnered with Youth Unlimited to start Heartbeat Bikes, a platform to engage and employ youth to help them overcome employment barriers. Through this venture, they assist with intentional life skills development, on-the-job training, and paid development and employment at bike repair store settings. Volunteers and mentor supports and motivate youth through coaching, training, conflict resolution, and advocacy. I want to thank Pastor Wayne and the rest of the staff at Heart Lake Baptist Church for their contributions to the community in the challenging times like these. We need more positive influences like Heart Lake Baptist Church in our communities. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Mr. Speaker, October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, a month during which employers are encouraged to highlight the accomplishments and contributions that people with disabilities make in Canadian workplaces. Inclusion and accessibility are not just words. They are the principles that guide our government's approach to strengthening Ontario's workforce as we push toward a barrier-free economy. I am proud to be part of a government that believes that everyone in Ontario should have the opportunity to reach their full potential, including through finding satisfying and meaningful work. An accessible and inclusive workforce does not just enrich the economy, it enriches our communities as well. Unfortunately, often those with disabilities or who might require some accommodation have trouble finding work. Studies that I have read report, for example, that many of those on the autism spectrum, perhaps as high as 70 per cent, never work. I believe that we need to do better and to ensure that as many people with disabilities who want to work and are able to work can find places to work that work for them. And I cannot help but think, given the need right now in Ontario for 290,000 workers to fill existing jobs, that we have an unprecedented opportunity to find work meaningful work for people with disabilities. I'm happy to recognize today the contributions that Ontarians with disabilities already make in the workplace and to pledge to work together to ensure a future where more people with disabilities find meaningful employment. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I want to talk about small businesses in my riding of Hamilton Mountain who are on the brink of permanent closure. Their owners were strung along by the government's promise of grant supports. 
promises that never came. In my writing, Paul of Paul's Paralegal was told he qualified for multiple grant installments. When he received the first grant, he poured it into his mounting operating costs. When it came time for the second grant, nothing happened. No funds, no communication. After jumping through hoops on his own and then reaching out to my office, Paul finally received correspondence. Was it a notice of direct deposit? No. It was something that left him feeling, in his own words, devastated. They said he was ineligible for the second grant and that upon audit of the program, he didn't qualify for any funds at all. He's had to lay off his staff and is growing increasingly worried about the future of his business, and he's not alone. We also heard from Ben of Paramount Safety Consulting. He received the first grant in April he received, and then received an email confirming that he qualified for the second grant. By June, nothing. Every 10 days, he was told to call back if he hadn't received notice. Every 10 days, he was left in the dark. Then Ben, too, received that dreaded email saying he didn't qualify. Speaker, just to add insult to injury, small, the Small Business Support Grant Department is no longer responding to the inquiries of MPP's offices. Since August, that department has been closed down for review and escalation. This means no communication with our offices and the ministry. They, this has left small businesses in the dark and is absolutely unacceptable. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week is Local Government Week. The week is meant to educate students on the importance and operation of municipal government, but one is never too old to learn. In fact, I didn't know about this campaign, and I've been a school board trustee for 10 years. The campaign is intended to highlight the key role that Ontario municipal governments play in our communities. The campaign is also intended to create more engaged citizenship and encourage people of all walks of life to run in municipal elections. We often forget that School boards also form part of local government with their school trustee, duly elected at the same time as city councillors. Their work also deserves to be recognized. School board trustees are important local representatives as they bring the voice of parents and students to the board's table. They set the vision, develop policies, allocate resources, and set the goals of the board. They influence decision-making on policy matters, shaping the learning experience of our children. I fully recognize the passion and dedication it takes to step up as a trustee. A large part of the role is done on a voluntary basis outside of professional and personal occupations. My regards and thanks to my past and present colleagues who are part of our local government. Happy Local Government Week. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. And, uh, the Gattle of uh, Dunville. Haldeman Norfolk is home to so many uh, great small towns across our uh, rich rural riding. And uh, recently, the uh, town of Dunville has taken center stage with two very significant accomplishments. On September the 11th, 128 flags went up on the main street of town to honor the 128,000 Canadian veterans who lost their lives serving our country. And these flags and poles will stay up until November the 12th under the watchful eyes of area people. It's truly an honor for me to address the crowd in Wingfield Park at this Veterans Voices of Canada Flags of Remembrance ceremony, only one of six ceremonies to be held that day across Canada. It's a great tribute to our fallen veterans and thanks to the great people of Dunville, the Royal Canadian Legion 142, and those who organized the event. There's a second uh, significant accomplishment speaker. Uh, Dunville never ceases to amaze. For the fourth year in a row, the Dunville Tim Hortons sold 48,000 smile cookies. That's the most cookies sold in Canada. Again, four years running. Smile cookies, they're sold through September. Proceeds go to local charities, and uh, in our case, to the well-respected Dunville Hospital Foundation. Dunville is an amazing small town. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Our government is providing more than $46 million 
to support 648 nonprofit tourism, culture, and sport and recreation organizations through the Community Building Fund's operating stream. In Whitby, four organizations received funding. Lynn House Museum, $46,100. The Whitby Minor Baseball Association, $43,500. Winreach Farm, $213,000. And Art with a Heart, $49,000. The impact of this money, uh, Speaker. Uh, Ross St. Croix, the Executive Director of Winreach Farm, the funding from the OTF Building Community Funds will be pivotal for us as we re rebuild our therapeutic riding program back to where it was prior to COVID. Winreach Farm's therapeutic riding program is the only one speaker of its kind in Durham Region. It provides much needed therapeutic recreation and fitness opportunities for individuals of all abilities in a tranquil and nurturing environment. And Art with a Heart is ecstatic to receive this funding, Speaker. We're looking forward to continuing to support Whippy residents through arts-based mental health and wellness programs while building sustainability for our charity. This past year, working with so many amazing participants, we've seen and heard the need in our community for ongoing arts-based mental health programming for kids, teens, adults, and our seniors. Taken together, Speaker, is our government lifting up people in the town of Whitby through this investment of most of $350,000? Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.